In this video, I'm going to show you how to make some super cute little characters using paintbrushes. They're wintry, they're whimsical, and they're fun. So if you want to see what I did, well then follow me. What's up glue dots? I'm Elaine the Midnight Crafter. I found a few of these cute little paintbrush characters sort of floating around on different websites and stuff. So I thought I'd give my hand at it and try and make my own little personalities come to life. So I'm going to show you how to do them and then you can kind of make them your own as well. So let's get right to crafting. So I got my paint brushes in a pack of three pieces and this was from Walmart. And I don't remember how much it was, but when I do, I will post it right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and give these each a painting. I'm gonna just use my little foam brush. You can use any brush you want. For this larger one, I'm gonna go with a red handle. I'm just using um, this Americana paint that I had. You can probably use the Dollar Tree acrylic paints or chalk paint or whatever you have that you like to use. It is gonna take a couple of coats, at least with this Americana, because I think it's kind of a little bit thinner paint and I don't know if you can see, but those words are showing right through there. So I do wanna get those covered up. Chalk paint typically is a little thicker. So what you can do is add a little bit of baking soda in here and use it as a chalk paint. Or if you actually have chalk paint, you can use that as well. And then because I'm impatient, I'm actually gonna use my hot air blower gun to dry this more quickly. And then I'll be moving on to my skinniest brush and I'm gonna use this color which is beachcomber beige, but any kind of a beigey color or a tan color would work just fine. And then for my medium size one, I'm gonna use this uh, multi-surface folk art patina and again, it's just the colors that I chose to kind of go with some of the embellishments that I have. So I'm gonna work on those. You know, I wanted to show you, I gave this three good thick coats. I don't know if you can see, but a little bit of the words still show through there. And you can always use the, the backside as your front for your project, but, um, I also tried using my sanding block from Dollar Tree and sanding off the words and they actually came off. So here's what it was like on the one and then it sands off pretty well. So because I'm doing this a light color and using this um, beachcomber beige, I actually ended up sanding off and I'm gonna do the same here on this one and show you. It doesn't take too much and it pretty much comes off and then that way you don't have to worry about adding several coats on there to eliminate that. There you go. It's pretty easy to get off. So I'm gonna, I think I recommend using the sanding block or some sanding paper to get that extra stuff off just to make it, to make your life a little easier. This beachcomber beige is actually pretty light. So I might add in just a drop of brown to kind of darken this up some. So maybe like half and half of the beachcomber beige and then this is just real brown. They're basically, if you can find a good light brown that you like, go for it. This one, as I said, I'm going to be painting with this um, patina color. It's a multi-surface folk art paint. And then this part here, or the metal part, I'm going to be painting that white. So now that these are all dry, here's where the fun part comes in. And I love this part. I'm going to start with this one here and put these two aside. And I'm going to be using some spare pieces that I have of this. Actually, this was from the Nutcrackers at Dollar Tree. And I'm going to leave a, an iCard up here or here, one of these <laughs> sides, um, showing you or if you want to see the last DIY that I did, the, the Nutcrackers that I took these off of. But um, I'm going to start out using this little piece here and I'm going to be trimming it. It's going to go across here and it's going to become the top of Santa's hat. Now this is kind of a little um, funky-ish, but I actually want it to be a little funky. So I'm going to sort of messy this up before I trim it. 
because I want I want it to look less like fur and more like you know his hat and not like a shaggy dog <laughs> so I got that a little bit messed up there and then I'm going to trim off the excess so that I have a straight line across the bottom. I'm just going to flip it over to the back side to do that so I can see a little better. Give it a little haircut. And then I'm just going to glue that down right here on my... I think I trimmed it a little too much, darn it. I made it a little too short. If you have a longer piece, that would be better. I trimmed it a little too short, but I want to cover up this um, metal part here. So I'll go ahead and put my hot glue on there. And I'm not going to wrap this all the way around. You can if you want to. Um, I'm actually not going to, I don't think at this point anyway. Actually, I made it, there you go. I'm gonna, see, we learn as we go, right? I'm gonna scrunch this stuff up so it can cover that other silver part since I cut this too short. <laughs> Add a little hot glue up there too and stick those loose pieces down. And then for whatever little pieces are hanging off the edge here, I'm gonna glue those around the back side. The next thing I'm going to do for mine is add a piece of this ribbon-ish cording. I'm not sure what it's called. I'm not sure where I got this, but something very similar to this is the uh, baker's twine that you can get at Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to add a piece of that around the top to go all the way around his hat. And I'm going to glue that down into place. I think it just gives a nice little finishing touch. Now I'm going to be gluing on some little googly eyes for him. Give him some eyeballs. And I'm gonna have these go right here, kind of on the brush part, but kind of under the fringy part, the fur part, whatever. And be a little bit um, careful with your hot glue because these googly eyes do melt if you, um, have too hot of glue or you put too much. Now I'm going to use one of my little dealy balls here. There's different sizes in the pack that I got and I'm not sure which pack I got or where I got it from but I think maybe Dollar Tree and you're going to just pick the size of nose that you would like for your Santa. Let's see how he looks with a bigger nose. Oh, the bigger nose is kind of cute actually, and it is a big brush, so I'm going to use the bigger nose and glue that right into place. Then I'm going to be adding some little embellishments here. If you have little gems you want to put on, or maybe you have those large, um, I don't know what they're called, like maybe a glitter type flakes, snowflake things, or whatever little things. So what I'm going to be putting here is a cute little bow and for that I'm going to be using this grow grain ribbon that I have. I think I got it for probably 99 cents at Michael's or Joann's or somewhere along the way. I'm just going to tie a little bow. I have some other things too I'm going to put on here and I'll show you those. I got this door hanger at I believe it was Dollar General for two dollars and it has these little leaves on there. I'm going to pull off a couple of these little leaves from the back side and use those to decorate my Santa. So I'm going to glue those just on top of the bow and then also from <laughs> this is from Dollar Tree and this is just the end piece of one of these berry garlands from Dollar Tree. Now obviously you don't have to go and buy and use all of these things. I just kind of picked items of pieces that I had around my house from my craft projects but use whatever you have. And then our Santa is almost done, but one of the finishing touches that is what's gonna make this stand out or make it even a little bit cuter, I'm gonna use this white chalk marker that I got from Dollar Tree. It's an art skills chalkboard marker. And it's the kind that when you shake it, you hear that little ball moving in there. So it actually has the paint in it. Now there's different designs you can choose to do. I really like like swirl designs or you can do polka dots. You can do whatever you like, even maybe snowflake types, but I don't know, I have a thing about swirls. So I'm just gonna start and make some big swirls. 
make them however you like or whatever design you like. And this little guy is done. I think he turned out adorable. If you'd like to add a little hanger to that, choose whatever ribbon you want. I'm gonna use this one again since I have it matching on here. It'll sort of tie in everything. I'm gonna cut a little piece enough to make a little hook and then hot glue that right onto the back. The next one I'm gonna do is my little reindeer one. This is the one we painted with that multiple times of remixing the brown there. So how I'm gonna start this one off is by first making a couple of eyeballs. And to do that, I'm gonna be using just a black Sharpie. I think this is also from Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna do that right here in the space between these two bottom um, strips. Now your paint brushes may be different, but just kind of towards the bottom part of the metal part of your paintbrush. And then I'm going to let my two dots dry there for a second and I'm going to use again my white chalk pen to make a little dot in the dot of the dot of the dot. <laughs> a little dot in the black part. Just like that. And then we're going to be putting on a Oh my gosh, you know what? I think it's called a bridal. I went through this a couple years ago with one of my other videos and I'll be darned if I cannot remember what it's called <laughs> again. Um, okay, so a, the thingy that goes around that holds their mouth thing, I don't know, you guys. But what I'm gonna do is take some of this green, uh, again, this green real thin ribbon that I have and I, again, probably paid 99 cents for it. And I have some scrap pieces. So I'm just gonna make the little bridal piece and I'm going to glue that down along the way here. Careful you don't burn yourself gluing the, this little skinny skinny ribbon. I'm putting that right down there at the bottom of the metal part and then I have my two other little pieces here and I'm going to be putting those kind of going up and slightly inward at an angle. And I know someone out there is gonna let me know, just like you guys let me know a couple years ago on my other reindeer video, which actually, I will, at the very, very end of the video, if you guys watch through, I will leave a link to the reindeer towels that I did. That is the cutest little project, and you guys will absolutely love that if you haven't already seen it. So far, you're gonna have something that looks like this. Now I'm gonna be taking a piece of ribbon. If you have a little bit thicker ribbon, I have this one that's red. I didn't have any plain red that's wide like this. So I'm just gonna use a piece of this and I'm gonna cut it off so that it goes across, obviously not covering all of the eyes and the other part that we just put on, but part of it anyway. And I'm gonna be gluing that right across there, just like this and also wrapping it around and gluing it onto the back. Now we're gonna be making some little antlers. And to do that, what I did is I took one pipe cleaner. Um, I'm not sure how long this pipe cleaner is. It looks to me like it's probably 11 inches, 12 inches maybe. And I cut that in half. So I will have two halves and we're gonna cut that yet again in half. Doesn't have to be exact half when you cut this other piece, kind of more, a little bit larger on one side than the other. And then putting the one a little, um, like a cross shape, you can see right here. And then I'm gonna just fold it around and then fold it around just to make sure that it really holds. So that's not going anywhere. 
Now I'm just going to kind of bend those in various directions to kind of give them the feel of antlers. You can give it whatever kind of bend. I guess, you know, deer don't have exactly perfect antlers all the time. So sort of however you want to do that. And you're going to make two of these. Then once you get them how you like them, you got two of them, we're going to glue those into place right up here. Doesn't he look like a hippie with a headband <laughs> at this point? All right, so I'm just going to glue that right there onto my little ribbon piece. And if you guys have, by the way, little googly eyes that you can put there, um, those would work great too. I just didn't have any, which is why I used the Sharpie and the chalk pen, but it's nice actually to see other options and ideas. Now I'm gonna make a little bow to put on here. And again, if you have other little embellishments or greenery or anything you might wanna put on there, those little teeny tiny miniature bells would be adorable on this too, actually. Or even maybe hanging from his antlers if they're not too heavy, that would be so cute. So the final touch for our little adorable deer is his deer little nose. And we're gonna give him a Rudolph nose. You can put whatever color nose you want, but I think he'll be adorable with a red nose. So that's what I'm doing. And we have our little reindeer one done as well. So for the last one, we're gonna try yet something even a little different. So we've tried the googly eyes, we've tried drawing on the eyes, and we've tried swirls on the top. In fact, by the way, if you wanna put some swirls on him or do some other cute things, most definitely you can do that. So now I'm gonna work on our little snowman person. And how I'm gonna do that is I have some yarn that I had purchased some time ago at I don't even know where, but obviously on clearance because I'm not a big um, knitter or crocheter actually. So I am going to use this to start creating a hat for our little character here. I'm just gonna start and glue this in place and then I'm gonna start wrapping it around. If you don't have variegated ribbon, you can always do a couple of rows with one color and then switch it out and go to another color. And that would give you the same, basically the same type of effect. So two things I wanna show you with this. I quickly learned that trying to wrap upwards, it's really hard to keep these strings to stay down. So when you start doing your little wrapping of this part, start from here and work your way down, which is what I'm gonna do. The other thing I wanted to show you is that the glue dries really fast and it's hard once it's dry to get it to be sticky again so that you can stick your um, yarn down. So a great way to do that is to hit it with the hot air guns and it will soften that right up and you don't have to keep adding more glue on top or trying to heat it with the tip. And I have an old Stampin' Up! one, but I've also left a link if you, I don't even know if they still have this same one, but if you're interested in getting one of these, there is a link down below in the description box. And then once it's heated up, you can just stick down your yarn as you normally would. So any of the spaces before that too can fill in. It's just a really great tool. Even if you stick two pieces of something together that you don't like the way they stuck together, it's great to use this to melt and remove them. So I'm gonna go back and start up here like I was explaining and you'll see what a big difference it makes. Just figure out where you want the top of your little hat to be and then we'll just start wrapping. This way too, having that heat gun, what's nice is you can 
put your extra glue around there so you can work and you know at least that if it does dry, you have a plan. This is so much easier and so much quicker to wrap from the top down. So oh, learn from my mistakes, guys. And then because I wanna have a little bit of a striped look, I'm going to um, go around one more time and then I'm gonna switch maybe to a different color. That way if you don't have that variegated yarn, you can still get that same look. So I have this part covered, but you know how a lot of hats have that little flipped up cuff? I'm gonna go ahead and go over a second layer with my um, yarn so that I can make almost like this has a little cuff flipping up on it. So now you can see kind of has a little more of the feel of a hat with the flipped over part. So to finish out the hat, we're gonna be taking one of our little balls here and I'm gonna use white. If you have some in the other colors and you wanna put those, that would be really cute. Now we're gonna be doing a little bit of that same wrapping, but down on this lower half. And make sure you do it way down here on a little bit kind of more down onto the bristles, maybe just one row on the metal, because you do want to leave enough space to put the face on there. This glue dries so fast on the metal because it's cold, so I'm really using my hot blower gun a lot for this project. But you definitely need to be careful not to melt the bristles, because that hot blower gets pretty hot and I got it on the bristles and it made them a little bit funky, but that's okay. So now once you have that part done, we're gonna finish out the little scarf. So if you'd like to, there's a couple of options. You can tie a little bow there as if it's a scarf that's tied on, or what I'm gonna be doing is taking a piece and folding it in half. And then I'm gonna glue that on and I'm gonna attach it pretty much right there to the center. And then I'm gonna take two of the small little dealy balls. And you can see those are much smaller than the ones up here on the top of the hat. And then I'm gonna glue those onto the ends so they're like the little, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the word is. The pom pom -y dealy ball things that go on the ends of scarves. <laughs> and I think actually I like one to hang a little bit shorter than the other. So I'm going to trim that a bit. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put on the little face. So for that, I'm going to be using my white chalk marker, my black marker, and then I have an orange Sharpie. If you can't find an orange Sharpie, maybe a little bit of orange paint. And because these are going to be snowmen or snow women, <laughs> I'm going to draw my eyeballs. And I'm gonna also just kind of play around if you wanna add some eyelashes or something. This is a bit of a thick marker, but you could probably use a finer um, Sharpie. And we'll do a kind of a jiggy jaggy little mouth. And then I'm also gonna use that white marker again, my chalk marker, to put the centers in the eyes like I did on the other one. And the last thing will be the little carrot nose. I think this little guy is just so stinking cute. And if you wanna add also a handle onto this one, we do that in the same way. If you wanna add any bows, of course, maybe like a little snowflake. I don't have any little snowflakes, but that sure would be cute. Or maybe some of the snow, the little fake snow, um, some maybe uh, gemstone embellishments, anything like that to give a little sparkle, I think would be really adorable on this little guy. You know what, I just can't resist. I have some of this little <laughs> fake snow here from Dollar Tree, so I think I'm gonna add some onto the hat and just play around with it a little because I think it's just, this feels like it just needs more coldness to it. And I'm just gonna do that by adding a little bit of hot glue in a couple spots. Hopefully they'll get the idea that it's snow and not think it's dandruff. <laughs> so that is, that's the wrong kind of snow. That is not the kind of snow we want. <laughs> 